The XTOL study was the phase two study with this new potassium channel opener. Some people may be familiar with the previous potassium channel opener that was available called ritigabine or izagabine, uh, and that drug went through phase one, phase two, phase three, was approved by the FDA, but unfortunately was taken off of the market after it was determined that it caused blue discoloration of the fingernails and the sclera, and it was unclear whether that would uh, cause long-term problems for people. But the mechanism of potassium channel opening, it was a, really a proof of concept that that was an important mechanism and that it was uh, capable of improving the, uh, the uh, lives of people with treatment-resistant epilepsy. So fortunately, this is another compound that has the same mechanism, uh, and it also worked. But it has some benefits to the previous compound, in addition to not producing the dimerization that caused the blue discoloration. It um, has a very long half-life, and it needs no titration, so it can be started at the therapeutic dose and it needs to only be taken once a day, whereas ritigabine uh, needed to be taken three times a day. So uh, a drug in the epilepsy space that only needs to be taken once per day is definitely advantageous. Uh, we don't really know about any major drug interactions at the moment, and we don't know of any major safety issues. There was another safety issue uh, with uh, ritigabine involving people having uh, bladder issues, uh, and so far there have been a few people who have had some minor bladder issues with this drug but nothing where they even uh, needed to discontinue therapy. They could continue therapy with it. So, so far we don't know of any serious safety concerns. Of course, it's early days, but uh, cautiously optimistic on that. And uh, in the uh, randomized placebo-controlled phase two trial, we saw you know, very nice efficacy, which was dose-related, with the highest efficacy being at uh, 25 milligrams. And all of the individuals who were uh, in the randomized placebo-controlled trial had an opportunity to go into the open-label extension, and now the open-label extension has been uh, ongoing for, for some patients over three years, so quite a substantial period of time. Um, and over 50% of the people that were in the original study continue on the drug, which is, you know, again, usually there's an attrition year on year on year, so have, still having 50% or over 50% of them is is, is a, a testament to the fact that they are receiving benefit from the drug. And the people who are continuing on the drug now, again, more than 50% of the original group, um, we're seeing a median of somewhere between 75% and 90% reduction in their seizures. So <laughs> that, again, in the long-term extension, they're certainly not losing benefit, and uh, you know, there's sustained benefit over time and they're getting substantial benefit, and they're tolerating the drug to the extent that they want to stay on it for a long-term uh, exposure. So, so far, the signs are very good, and there are two now uh, phase three studies that are ongoing. I'm sorry, there's one phase three study that's ongoing, um, and another phase th uh, three study in another type of epilepsy, generalized epilepsy. Um, and so hopefully soon we'll have those enrolled and get more data and know even more. But um, people are certainly talking about this drug as you know, uh, a drug that can make people seizure free and uh, that will provide you know, uh, a game-changing improvement in the lives of people with treatment-resistant epilepsy.